Greetings from the cockpit. This is your captain speaking. Our AV system isn't working today, so we can't show you the $2 million safety video that an ad agency did for us. But since very little of what that video tells you will actually save your lives, I'm going to do it instead. The FAA says that 60% of you ignore the safety talk. Today, you'll hear the real safety talk you should have been given years ago. You don't want to miss this one. Here's the big thing to remember. If we crash or make an emergency landing, statistically speaking, 95% of you will survive. If it's a serious crash, 55% of you will survive. So if this plane is going down, concentrate because your life may depend on some smart decisions. Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen within the first three minutes and last eight minutes of the flight. So that's when it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are the ones facing backward, like the ones the flight crew are seated in. No, that's not a coincidence. The next safest seats are over the wings, closest to the emergency exit. If you're not in one of those right now, that's a bummer. But here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where the nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to the exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing just that. Now, look at your seatbelt. I know you all know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try to open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like the seatbelt on your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting the flap in an emergency. In fact, do it now just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the plane in a quick and orderly way. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will also be trying to get off this plane, and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll-on. Now you're probably well aware that there's a life jacket under your seat. Forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline pillows. Sure, there was the famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately and no one actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and then couldn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, you can't. If that happens, here's what I'm required to do. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent. That's going to feel like a roller coaster drop and it's going to scare the crap out of you, but it's not dangerous. I've practiced. Also, by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline. And I need to do all of that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job and you're going to be fine. For those of you who didn't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when I get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? that you won't get your frequent flyer points for this flight. Just kidding. Now the biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those duty-free bottles you purchased and put in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the US alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that we should be handing out a helmet and skip the seatbelts. Another big risk is the drink cart. 
seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year passengers get their elbows and knees and feet broken when the drink carts slam into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why haven't the airlines put some safety padding on the drink cart? No idea. Seems pretty basic. Same goes for the spill-proof coffee and teapots and cups with lids. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence. But until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now you're probably wondering, how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't even get the AV system or the latch on your tray table to work properly? To be honest, we sometimes wonder that as well. But the stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is about 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health's 2006 study. So you are far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20 percent fewer people flew. But because more people made driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after a 9-11 just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight because our flight crew doesn't like to be bothered in the galley and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. Please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and barely edible meal and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of the chair and get to the toilet. Look forward to flying with you again.